Greetings, my name is Andrew Greenfield and today I'm going to take you on a tour of Spectrum Connect and its integration with VMware and vCenter. Now while I'm your narrator, I want to give a huge shout out to Joshua Bloomer, a great CTS at IBM that I've been working with for years. He's a fantastic guy, truly a great VMware expert, as well as many other Docker and container technologies. Let's go into a little bit more. There's a picture of Joshua. There's a picture of myself. I'm part of the Worldwide Global Engineering Team. Joshua's a CTS out of New York. There's our emails in case you want to reach us. Now, more importantly, why am I watching this video? You are because you want to see how a very free piece of software can make storage administration easier for those who are using VMware or even Docker or Kubernetes. How is that done? Spectrum Connect in the center, as you see here, will actually integrate with all of the IBM storage arrays, and that includes the 9100, Spectrum Virtualize, SVC, as well as the Accelerate, A9000, A9000R, XIV, et cetera, and provides all those functions to the VMware universe, as well as container and Kubernetes and all the other fun stuff. Now, you'll see later on that we also have Spectrum Control that does some other functionalities, but for this demo, we're going to focus on Connect, and you can see all this integration right here. Now, Depending on which storage array, most of the functions are available, but as you see, some of them are coming later on this year, here in 2019. Next, let's take a look topographically at what's going on here. Notice at the center, we have Spectrum Connect. That is the widget or the application, which we'll be demoing just a little bit to connect VMware's vCenter, as well as VRA and VRO and VROps, and even SRM to the actual storage arrays that we've just been talking about. It also will do the same thing for Docker and Kubernetes. We'll see this in just a little bit, but I want you to see where it fits in the overall logical diagram. Now, as a bigger picture, before we narrow back down again, we're gonna be focusing today on how vCenter talks with Spectrum Connect and provides those stored services as volume. So in other words, the point of this video is that very simply after you install VMware and have Spectrum Connect installed and a storage array by IBM, you can delegate the responsibilities of creating snapshots and storage and data stores inside vCenter with one click so a storage administrator can do it in the vCenter and not bother the storage team or anything like that. Meanwhile, the storage team can, can delegate just a pool or a set of resources from those arrays to Spectrum Connect and can actually do so in a variety of ways. It's not an all or nothing. And we'll explore that next. Here's some quick screen grabs in case you don't want to watch the rest of the video. Spectrum Connect will, can handle various different arrays and then create different spaces as well as storage services. For example, XIV would be a different storage service than an A9000 or a V7000 would be different than a V9000. And that includes different tiers of service as well. You connect it into your vCenter, and you can have multiple interfaces as well, VRO, vCenter, as well as Docker Kubernetes, and VROps as well. What does it look like once you're inside? Yes, I promise you'll get to the demo, but just in case, here's some nice screen grabs. Once you've installed Spectrum Connect, you'll get a Storage Volume Objects Extra button, depending on if you're using the Flex interface or if you're using HTML, and you'll see the HTML next and then you'll be able to see the IBM storage volumes and vVols that you've actually provisioned. Next, even inside vRealize, if you want to then automate some of this from inside VMware, this is not a problem. We provide the primitives, as you can see, so that you can then script everything inside VMware to do something on the actual storage. If that's snapshots, if that's mounting a volume, extending a volume, or being able to do any of those other primitives, you can see them far down below. Now, let's get to the demo itself. Here's the IBM Spectrum Connect interface. Let's log in right now. And the first thing I need to do once I've logged in is that I will need to talk to my storage arrays. And I need to do that by checking my storage credentials. So as I click on storage credentials, I'm going to actually put them in right here. And as I do, a nice little copy and paste, we'll put those in. The next thing I need to do is I need to put in the actual IP or host name of the storage arrays I'm about to connect to. So you can see that I'm putting in an IP address. This is my A9000 in my lab. 
So one array is added, let's add another array. So this is the A9000, part of the accelerate line. And now let me add another one. So you'll see that I'll put in a slightly different IP address of my V9000, or part of the virtualized storage array line. And again, it's using those storage credentials you saw earlier. So I have two arrays that are put in here. The next thing I need to do is I need to add an interface. So Spectrum Connecting can talk to a lot of different interfaces, not just vCenter, but as you notice, even Kubernetes and VRO. So this time, instead of an IP address, I'll put in a DNS name or a fully qualified host name along with my username and password. So as you can see, I will now be finishing this up for vCenter to talk to Spectrum Connect. And it says, okay, I've got a vCenter, but I don't know any storage or services. No problem, let's connect the dots. So we're gonna go back to our storage systems and right next to it, you'll see storage services. So let's add a service. Actually, let's call it Flash 2. And I can add capabilities. This is metadata so that the virtual center administrator can obviously understand a little bit more about all the different arrays he or she might be seeing, including VVOLs, compression, encryption, etc. So now that I've added Flash 2, you see that it's yellow. I need to attach it. So now that I've created a service, I'm now going to right click on my system and I will attach it. So as you can see, it says, are you sure? Of course. Now that it's attached on one side, I need the other side. I need to tell Spectrum Connect that we're going to use that array directly inside vCenter. So we call that a delegation. And it says, are you sure you want to delegate the storage service to the vCenter? And this is an important point because now we are telling the storage array to get all of its commands directly from vCenter. And let's go to vCenter right now. So here's my vCenter interface. You can see that I'm using the same credentials as I just used inside Spectrum Connect, but it could be a different account for this matter. That way you have a service account versus a normal administrator account. You can see that it comes up on IBM Storage Services. You can see the Flash 2. And also, let's go into the summary so you can see a little bit more of what I've got here in my lab. Under More Objects, I can actually bring up that IBM integration. First of all is the storage space. Next, under Storage Services, you can see the Enterprise Flash and the Flash 2 that we've just created. Let's go in now to those storage services. So if I click on Enterprise Flash, you'll see that there's currently nothing in consistent scripts or volumes. It's part of our default space. We know that from that metadata screen I just showed you in Spectrum Connect that it's flash and the data reduction is both compression and deduplication. Great. Also, in the right-hand side, you can see how much is used, how much capacity is totally there, as well as how much is free. Now, when I was right by the action menu, Here's the great shortcut that really makes Spectrum Connect useful. From inside vCenter, I now can provision storage. Just by clicking on the Create New IBM Storage volume, it'll bring up a new menu. So take a look here. It says, wait a second, what host do you want to put this to? Great, I'll select that. And then it says, oh, here's the service capabilities for what you've currently selected so that I can either use this from a policy-based selection or I can change the size or the number of volumes as well as name it and the LUN ID as well. I'll make this 15 giga integer bytes and I'll name it test v1. Now when I click OK, it'll go through and it'll actually start doing this. Now, when I go to IBM storage volumes, you can see the older volumes before I installed Spectrum Connect here and also the test v1 I just created. Now notice those older ones don't have very much metadata because they were created outside of the Spectrum Connect integration. But if I click on the test v1, you'll actually see a lot more rich metadata, which is very useful for the vCenter administrator. Before I do that though, I wanna show that this volume was successfully created on my A9000. So inside the Hyperscale Manager, I click on Volumes, and now let's search for that same volume here. Now the Hyperscale Manager is the GUI for the A9000. So if I type test 
V1, you'll see that it automatically finds it on one array, yes, Tyron, and it's 16 gigabytes. Notice the worldwide name, notice the pool. This is the pool that I've delegated to Spectrum Connect from the A9000. In other words, you don't have to dedicate the entire array. You can just dedicate a certain portion. And now by clicking on test V1 here inside vCenter, you can actually see the same metadata, the Flash A9000, known as Tyron the Imp, part of the domain name SCB domain that I've created inside the A9000. You can see the serial number, you can also see that I've currently done no snapshots or mirroring, although this would be updated as well. And if I want to configure this, I can actually rename, I can change the multipath, I can change the size or even the host mapping, all from within the vCenter interface, which is, again, the important part of why Spectrum Connect is very useful as your overall storage strategy. And again, if I wanted to resize this volume, I can show you this right here. And if I want to change the host mapping, I could do that right here as well. And as you can see, I can click on a new data store here to now take this and create a new data store. So I'll name it very similarly. So I'm creating a new data store now off this LUN. And as you can see, instead of looking from locals and non-specific metadata, I can actually find this. So I now finish up the VMFS, and as you can see, it picked up the change. So now I've taken a LUN, I've made a data store out of it, I presented it to a host, and there is that data store which I can now use. Thanks again for watching. Again, this was a nice video from Andrew Greenfield and Joshua Bloomert of IBM describing VMware and its integration in Spectrum Connect. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out, and I look forward to seeing you soon at a TechU or one of our many, many worldwide global presentations and conferences.